In 1855, a German scientist named Rudolf Virchow made a fundamental observation about living things. All cells come from other cells. Therefore, cells must be able to make copies of itself. Mitosis is the process by which a cell divides its nucleus into two. Mitosis involves four stages. In the four stages are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Let's take a look at each stage. Prophase begins after interphase. Remember, interphase is not an official stage of mitosis, where the DNA is made a copy of itself. In plant cells, they must go through an additional stage in which the nucleus moves to the center of the cell before prophase. The main events of prophase are the chromosomes condense, the movement of the centrosomes, the formation of the mitotic spindle fibers, and the beginning of the nuclei breakdown. After inner phase, you can't see the chromosomes very clearly because they are still in their long, stringy, decondensed form. Animal cells make a copy of its centrosome, an organelle that will play a key role in the orchestrating of mitosis. So there are now two centrosomes. Plant cells don't have centrosomes, but they have another structure that works. In early prophase, the chromosomes start to condense, and this makes them easier to pull apart later. The mitotic spindle fibers begin to form. The spindle fiber is a structure made of microtubules, which are strong fibers that are part of the cell skeleton. Its job is to organize the chromosomes and move them around during mitosis. The spindles grow between the centrosomes as they move apart. The portion of the nucleus where the ribosomes are made disappears. This is a sign that the nucleus is getting ready to break down. In late prophase, the mitotic spindle fibers begin to capture and organize the chromosomes. The chromosomes finish condensing, so they are now very compact. The nuclear env envelope breaks down, releasing the chromosomes. The mitotic spindle fibers grow more, and some of them begin to capture the chromosomes. The cell is now ready for metaphase. Let's first take a look at metaphase in real life. So here's what's going on during metaphase. During metaphase, the sister chromatids align in the middle of the cell. However, for this to happen, a couple things had to happen during prophase. During prophase, the chromatid condensed into X-shaped chromosomes. Each half of the X is a sister chromatid with identical copies of the DNA. In other words, a sister chromatid is one half of the duplicated chromosome. The two sides of the X-shaped chromosome is attached at the centromere. Centromeres are the region of the DNA where the sister chromatids are most tightly connected. During metaphase, spindle fibers appear. These fibers create something called the spindle apparatus. It consists of spindle fibers, centrioles, and another fiber called astrofibers, which are microtubules that extend from each centrosome towards the edge of the cell. In plants, the centrioles are missing. The spindle apparatus migrates to the poles of the cell. The spindle fibers attach to the centromeres of the sister chromatids at the connector cord. After the spindle fiber is attached at the connector cord, the sister chromatid is pulled along by the spindle apparatus and will eventually end up in the middle of the cell. Before proceeding to anaphase, the cell will check to make sure that all the chromosomes have their connector cords correctly attached to the microtubules. This is called the spindle checkpoint, and it helps ensure that the sister chromatids will split evenly between the two daughter cells when they separate in the next step. Metaphase takes roughly 4% of the time required for the completion of the cell cycle. From metaphase, the cell will move into anaphase and will begin separating the chromosomes. Anaphase is the third stage of mitosis. Here's what anaphase looks like in real life. Anaphase is the shortest stage of mitosis and accounts for roughly 1% of mitosis. During metaphase, the chromosomes have been aligned in the middle of the cell and spindle fibers have attached to each chromosome at the connector cord. In anaphase, the sister chromatids separate from each other and are pulled towards opposite ends of the cell. The protein glue that holds the sister chromatids together is broken down, allowing them to separate. 
Each is now its own chromosome. The chromosomes of each pair are pulled towards opposite ends of the cell. Microtubules not attached to chromosomes elongate and push apart, separating the poles and making the cell longer. Let's watch this one more time. From anaphase, the cell moves on to telophase. Telophase is the last phase of mitosis. Here's what it looks like in real life. During telophase, the newly separated daughter chromosomes get their own individual nuclear membranes, an identical set of chromosomes. Once the daughter chromosomes have separated, they move to the opposite poles of the cell. A new nuclear membrane forms around the two sets of daughter chromosomes, and this creates two separate nuclei inside the same cell. The cell will also continue to elongate. You might think of the events of telophase as the reversal of the events that occur during prophase. Now that the two set of daughter's chromosomes are encased in a new nuclear envelope, they begin to spread out again. When this occurs, it is the end of telophase, and mitosis is now complete. Telophase takes roughly an hour to complete. Thanks for watching, and Moo Moo Math uploads a new math and science video every day. Please subscribe and share.